Remember, when you're a prepper, things can and actually do blow up. Hi, this is Everyday Prepper. Welcome to the channel. Now, I had uh, an interesting experience last night. Well, a couple of interesting experiences, actually. Um, one, hopefully you've seen the video of, uh, which was where I was camping in my garden. Um, but whilst I was setting up all the tent and getting ready for the evening, I had a bit of an issue with one of my batteries on my battery bank. Now, those that follow the channel uh, will know that I posted a video recently where um, one of my batteries, I had three left in my battery bank. One died a while back. They're coming to the end of their life. They're sort of coming up to five years old. And what basically happened was um, one of, I suspected that one of the batteries had possibly died. Um, the voltage was dropping down to, the overall voltage across the three batteries was dropping down to about 11 point something volts, which was not good. Uh, and then all of a sudden, um, yesterday or the day before, or yeah, a couple of days ago, um, we had some really good um, sunshine and the charge controller chucked a load of stuff, a load of, um, chucked a load of power into the batteries and then it started reading 12.9 again and I was thinking what on earth is going on here anyway last night we thought um, in my room where I have all my solar stuff because the batteries are actually indoors they're in an enclosed space um, and uh, I've got fans set up and things like that but the um, we thought the dog had been farting in the room uh, because there was a distinct smell of eggs or sulfur and then I kept I kept coming into the room, we kept airing it out, and apparently this had been going on for a couple of days. I didn't notice it until last night. Uh, but the um, turns out one of the batteries was venting because it was being overcharged. Uh, so I was lulled into a false sense of security by my Victron Bluetooth charger. What I should have done, as soon as I noticed an issue with the voltage, is I should have taken the batteries, uh, um, unlinked all the batteries and tested them all immediately. So that's a learning point for me. Uh, it didn't stop there. When I finally um, checked out the batteries, the middle one, which was a very, very slightly different model to the others, and you are, you are told not to mix and match. Bear in mind, I've had all these linked up for five years, so it's probably just come to the end of its life because the amp hour capacity, the voltage, the brand, um, pretty much everything else is exactly the same. It's just a slightly different, um, slightly differently made. The handles in a different place. Um, so uh, it wasn't really, I don't know if that was the issue. I don't think it was. Um, I think it's just come to the end of its life. Anyway, when I went to uh, undo or uh, disconnect all the batteries, because they're all linked up in parallel, the middle battery was exceedingly hot, like really hot to the touch, like you could probably fry an egg on it. Um, so I quickly went on to chat GPT. I thought that's the best way to get some answers here. And uh, let me... Um, let me read you what it, what it said. So basically I said, I typed into ChatGPT and I just said, could my battery explode? Uh, and it said, um, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, here's some signs of imminent explosion, hissing or bubbling. Well, when I listened closely to the battery, putting my head nice and close, um, there was a heck of a lot, a lot of sizzling and bubbling going on in there, which uh, didn't sound good. And I didn't realize because I have a cover in front of them and I wouldn't have heard it. Um, without opening it up. Sudden swelling. The battery casing may start to bulge due to internal pressure. That's the only thing that wasn't happening. Heat. The battery might feel hot to the touch. Yeah, no shit. It was really, really hot. Smoke or odour. Persistent sulphur smell or smoke emissions. So there was no smoke, but there was a really strong smell of sulphur. Anyway, got the battery, hoofed it out, got it out the front, shoved it between the caravan on the front lawn on the grass between the caravan and the house um, in the meantime it was bubbling i could hear it it was getting hotter and hotter and hotter so i was like oh my god what's going to happen is this going to explode so i'm trying to check with chat gpt what kind of um what kind of yield a 12 volt battery 110 amp, amp hour is going to um produce you know is it going to blow my house up is it going to blow my caravan up um or both or what's going to happen here? And it sounded like it's probably going to be sort of isolated, um, but cause a big fire. So I thought, well, that's all right. I'll pull out my fire extinguisher. 
which we had brand new fire extinguisher. We've had it stored uh, in the stash um, just in case. And we've got a couple of other fire extinguishers around. Now these, this one I think I bought on Amazon, it's pretty cheap. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you the, um, the brand and everything. But uh, so checked on the fire extinguisher, it's a powder one, which would be great. Uh, although it doesn't reduce the heat of the, um, of the fire, it just smothers it. So it stops the fire, which is what I'd want. And um, anyway, it said on the box, uh, absolutely, as you can see here, absolutely do not use if the pressure indicator is in the red. So I checked on the fire extinguisher and it's in the red. Now this has been, never been used, it's just been stored from brand new. So um, it looks like it's lost pressure, so it's obviously not a tight seal or something, it's just lost pressure. Uh, so it probably would have been safe to use, um, surely, at low pressure, maybe. Um, at high pressure, obviously not, but... Um, yeah, it was in the red, so uh, that's going to have to go. I'm going to have to get another one. So I'll probably buy a recognised brand like Chubb or um, one of the other um, decent brands of fire extinguisher. So yeah, it was all a bit of a nightmare. Luckily, the battery did not explode, but I ch had to check it right up. And this was about half nine at night, um, and I was due to go camping in my garden, the other garden, not next to the battery. So. Uh, I went out just before I went to bed, which was kind of 11-ish, something like that, and the battery had started to cool down. It was still really hot, um, but it had started to cool down, and luckily, um, oh, it rained last night as well, so I put a cover over the top of it, just in case it shorted out. Um, but uh, this morning it was it was cold, and there was no signs of any bubbling going on, so um, uh, what I did is um, arrange for my wife to take it down the tip, uh, which she did. Uh, well, I was busy, see? And uh, so she took it down the recycling centre and they um, they got rid of it. So learning point uh, is if you see any change of voltage in your um, charge controller or in your battery, always have a voltage um, readout. And if you see a major change, if you've got more than one battery and you see a big change in the voltage there and there's no draw, uh, there's nothing, nothing, no other reason why this, why this should be really low, then get them out, take them apart, um, d disconnect them from each other and test the voltage. Had I done that uh, a few days ago, I would have noticed that what I suspected was it was just a dead battery. So what I suspect has happened is the battery's got completely dead and the charge controller has just stuffed as much power, as much current through all of the batteries to get the whole charge up. Um, in which case the dead battery not receiving any charge is having charge going through it still and that's caused an overcharge. And if you're overcharged that's when it off gases sulphur smell and um, uh, can blow up. So yes, uh, disaster averted uh, just by the skin of my teeth, by the sounds of it. Uh, so uh, yeah, so just because I've spent years setting up solar and you know, built my own systems with charge controllers and all sorts of stuff like that, um, until you experience something like this, you know, and I've, I've always known there's a risk of exploding batteries, but uh, um, it, I could have missed it and that could have been absolutely disastrous. So in the future, um, hmm, I mean, I want to replace the batteries with lithium iron or um, LiFePo batteries, which have even more risk of explosion. Uh, but it's usually towards the end of their life or if they're being overcharged. Now, if you're using a decent charge controller, like I am, the Victron one, um, then, uh, you know, that shouldn't happen. Uh, so it was, it was a combination of me really, well, it's basically just my fault. Um, I can't blame the charger. The charger just uh, carried on uh, as normal. And I'm sure in the terms and conditions or the um, instructions of the charge controller, it, it tells you, I would have thought quite clearly that, you know, if the, volt if the voltage is not displaying properly, then you need to uh, disconnect them all and um, check each individual battery. But anyway, I thought I'd just get it out there. Um, it was quite an interesting experience for me. And uh, but I still slept reasonably soundly in my uh, in my tent on and off, uh, as you saw. And luckily, we've got the battery away from our house. You know, if it blows up at the tip, that's fine. No problem with that at all. Uh, so I know what to look out for next time. Hope you found that uh, useful. And uh, you know, stay safe if you are um, building your own systems, and um, just keep an eye on those batteries. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching. 
and stay prepared. Mm-hmm.